Uh, Scott Kelly now, astronaut Scott Kelly, we are going to be getting pictures. This is Scott Kelly being pulled from the Soyuz capsule in Kazakhstan, where uh, that's not Scott Kelly, I'm told. Okay, this is Sergei Volkov, the commander. Okay, I was told. And here you see, uh, he has not been up in space quite as long as Scott Kelly, but this is now a live picture here, We're looking at NASA TV, of Sergei Volkov, the flight engineer aboard the International Space Station, who was part of that mission uh, with Commander Scott Kelly, the NASA astronaut, who, as we've been saying, is ending a uh, remarkable run of 340 days up in space. Now, from what I understand here, and I am not our CBS News space consultant, however, I have read his very astute notes. <laughs> uh, what's happening here is that these astronauts obviously need to get their uh, Earth legs, but in the meantime, scientists need to get data very quickly from them because the body, I'm told, changes very quickly, going from a zero gravity environment to a 1G environment. And so, Things like uh, blood uh, samples, uh, the effects on the heart, all of these things are critical uh, for, these na for these scientists to get the immediate readings on. And they also don't want to have uh, the gravity environment affect them just yet, so those astronauts are being put into chairs. Okay, I'm told we do now have our CBS News space consultant, Bill Harwood. Bill, were you listening? Did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I'm okay. here. All right, so tell us what it is that we're going to be seeing, because for viewers who might not be aware, uh, Scott Kelly has been up in space for 340 days aboard the International Space Station. He's just landed in Kazakhstan, and he's being pulled out of the Soyuz capsule. What is it that we're going to be seeing here? Well, what the Russians always do, Elaine, is pull the crew members out one at a time, starting with the spacecraft commander. He's in the center seat. Then they move him over to some recliners. They do some initial very quick medical checks. Then they're going to move them into a tent that's been set up near the landing site. And they're going to carry out some extensive tests just because of this long-duration mission. As you say, one of, the, one of the things they really want to find out is exactly what happens as this readaptation to gravity begins. Uh, so all of these things are happening as we speak. Every minute counts to the scientists. And so they're going to try to collect as much data as they can right off the bat. Uh, that's uh, Sergei Volkov, the mission commander we saw there briefly sitting in that center seat. Uh, just so I'm making sure I'm clear here, so he's the mission commander, meaning the commander of the Soyuz capsule mission back to Earth. Is that right? That's right. That's uh, so, right, of the Soyuz capsule. So uh, just remind our viewers how hostile environment is space, because uh, I know in a conversation that we had yesterday with astronomer Derek Pitts uh, out of Philadelphia, he was talking about uh, the effects of space radiation and how space is a very hostile environment for the human body. Oh, no question about it. I mean, they're flying in a vacuum in space. Their orbital velocity is five miles a second, which is hard to imagine. So think about it more in terms of 86 football fields a second. Uh, extremely fast space radiation, extremes of temperatures. And then, of course, the reentry that they're going through to come home, where they're slowing down from five miles a second to this very jarring touchdown on the step of Kazakhstan. It is a, it's an amazing experience by all accounts. All right, we see someone else now being pulled from the Soyuz capsule. Can't quite see. That's Scott Kelly. That Elaine. is That's, Scott uh, Kelly. U.S. After astronaut pumping his fist in the air. Wow, with a smile, it looks like, on his face. Uh, there you saw giving the thumbs up there as he is being placed into... Uh, that recliner that you mentioned, yeah, he'll be placed there soon. We're going to go ahead, Bill. I'll have you stand by while we listen to NASA TV. Back down on Mother Earth, back down in Kazakhstan, where he launched from just about 12 months ago. Over here, please. And so much like Volkov before him, Kelly now being loaded over into his chair. Dan, I'm going to make my way over to the other side of the chairs here where Scott is. Everything. Okay, sounds good, Rob. We'll stand by. We can see the uh, the NASA team. You can see Sean Fuller there just behind Scott Kelly. He's the uh, director of all the NASA operations out there in Russia. Oh, 
Asking everyone to step back. Here comes, we step back. We step back and don't interfere. And we're seeing a big smile from Scott Kelly there. You can see just to his right, Steve Gilmore, uh, Scott's prime flight surgeon for his year in space. No stranger to cold landings in Kazakhstan. This is his fourth mission, his second landing in a Soyuz. Uh, 520 total days uh, in space across his uh, space flight career, 340 days in this historic year in space. And then uh, Scott just looked at us and said, uh, the air feels great out here. I have no idea why you guys are all bundled up. With uh, temperatures hovering right around freezing, I imagine you guys are thankful for your jackets, but for somebody who hasn't uh, had the breeze on his face for almost a year, I bet it feels pretty great out there right now. And back over at the capsule, we can see uh, Mikhail Kornienko, the other one-year crew member outside the capsule, getting ready to get carried over as well. Did you work for Mission Control? And Dan, uh, Scott Kelly absolutely relishing the fresh air out here in the mid-morning hours here in, uh, in the southern steppe of Kazakhstan, breathing deeply, enjoying every second of his return to Earth. And we just saw Mikhail Kornienko go down the slide. He's getting carried over, so he'll be joining you shortly as well. So with that, all three crew members out of the Soyuz capsule safely down there on the step in Kazakhstan. One year mission, guys. I'm fine. Okay, yes, uh, we covered him up, wrapped him up. How are you? And so, Rob, now all the initial medical checkouts are about to begin. Is the medical tent set up there on site? And uh, yes, it is. It's directly behind us, Dan. Uh, uh, as uh, is the custom, they will carry uh, each of the crew members one by one uh, this short distance. It's about a 50 yard uh, haul. Uh, to carry the crew members into the medical tent where they will, uh, as I said earlier, uh, have their sofa lunch and entry suits removed and then uh, have an opportunity uh, to uh, undergo about an hour to an hour and a half worth of field testing, uh, which is the first uh, critical biomedical measurement of uh, all of their uh, uh, all of their uh, biomedical functions, uh, that will be the initial test of their response uh, to a gravity environment for the first time in a year. Well, we exercise there on a regular basis. Yeah. Is it the old, the old tradition? And then, uh, very swift work made by uh, the Energia folks, uh, Sergei Volkov, uh, uh, just a few feet away from me. Uh, his father is uh, kneeling down right next to him. Uh, what a picture that is. Father and son, cosmonaut heritage that has spanned several decades of Russian space history. Everything as we, taught, as we were taught. And we just had a, a great view of that. Saw Scott Kelly with a satellite phone in his hand, uh, assuming uh, making a call the friends and family uh, eagerly awaiting his return here to Houston just about 24 hours away or so from now. A lot of smiles from all three crew members now safely out of that Soyuz vehicle. Well, you see, just let me go to a sauna down here and then I can fly again. <laughs> Alexander, hello. Please uh, pass along our thank you. Right now we're looking at uh, Mikhail Kornienko and the other crew members where you can see uh, the various uh, flight surgeons and nurses out there with the surge and recovery forces affixing a number of devices just to get those initial medical readings from the crew members. 
сейчас повернем. Оно же тяжелое, оно же алматинское. Ну, Билл Харвуд, если вы еще с нами, CBS News Space Consultant, there is a picture astronaut Scott Kelly back on Earth after 340 days in space. Uh, so we know some of the effects of no gravity on the body. Do we know really, Bill, what almost a year in space does to the human body? Well, no, of course, and that's one of the reasons they wanted to do this mission. Now, four Russian cosmonauts logged more than a year of space, well more in a couple of cases, uh, back in the 90s aboard the Ormir space station. Uh, but this is the first time you've had this sort of international peer-reviewed research, dozens of experiments with state-of-the-art technology, and they expect to gather an enormous amount of data. I mean, every astronaut in space loses muscle, uh, muscle mass, they lose bone density. Those are things that can be recovered, but some of the longer-term issues are, what are the long-term effects of space radiation when you're not shielded by Earth's atmosphere in the Van Allen radiation belts? That's a critical question for future missions to Mars, for example. They also know that uh, weightlessness, prolonged weightlessness, can affect the vision in many astronauts. Sometimes it corrects itself back on Earth, sometimes it doesn't. That's another big question mark that has to be answered. So, They're hoping to get really a treasure trove of data out of this mission, like I said, with state-of-the-art technology and protocols, uh, and then think about what do you do next? You know, do you launch another long-duration mission? Do you change it up a little bit? Because they need a lot of this sort of data before they can seriously plan a mission to Mars. And he has a twin, so, Bill, they'll have sort of a control subject to compare right. all of the changes, right? That's right. Scott Kelly's brother, Mark, is also a former astronaut. He, he was a shuttle commander. Uh, he's participated in many of the same experiments on the ground to serve as a control. And one of the things they're going to be looking at are the effects of space radiation on the genetic structure of Scott Kelly and how that compares with uh, the, the, the genetics of his brother Mark on the ground. So really, you know, very, very finely focused research to determine some of these more subtle effects of life in the space environment. All right. And we know, uh, Bill, he's coming back to the U.S. pretty soon. Well, that's right. After they get done with these initial field tests in Kazakhstan, all three uh, of these crew members are going to be flown uh, to a nearby town in Kazakhstan. Uh, Mikhail Kornienko and the commander, Sergei Volkov, fly from there back to Star City in Moscow. Scott Kelly gets on a NASA jet and flies back to Houston. They're expecting him back in Houston just a little bit before midnight tomorrow night, Eastern time. All right, Bill Harwood there, CBS News space consultant, breaking this down for us. Astronaut Scott Kelly's return to Earth after 340 days in space. Bill, thank you so much. Sure thing.